Welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News, or what we call now as House Stuff. Pat, what's your rate? McMaster's and Jacqueline Smith of Century 21, and Ruby is still gone. Um, we're in arbitration. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she'll be back next week. She's. Uh, we want to continue the, the myth that she's been suspended for bad behavior. Yeah, I just want, I I just that's not necessarily that. a myth. <laughs> I just want to get to a point where people are like wondering where she's going. Cause you see these uh, celebrities or people that just leave the air for a couple months and Oh, what happened to them? Oh, they're, they decided to move on. <laughs> yeah, that's Speaking right. Of, yeah. Did, you, yeah. did you see yeah. the waving arm guy video? I sent you that he's taking a break now that we're that. supposedly officially in a crash. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. He predicted oh. it for three years and now he's going to take a break. Well, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. So we're going to start talking about uh, the, the chatter of the day, and that's Chairman Powell. But I want to remind everybody, we are sponsored by our friends at Red Hog Media. And they also do drone work. So I'm going to turn my mic off. They have some great tools. Red Hog Media is our sponsor. And in this market, real estate agents, um, that's not an area where you should cut corners. So um, I highly recommend having the uh, um, the drone footage if you're in an area where, you know, looking at the property from the sky is, is enhances it. Uh, but I more importantly recommend the floor plan that she offers along with the uh, uh, 360 walkthrough. So if you're going to list a home, I recommend you do that because um, exposure is everything right now in this market. Now, we are still seeing, um, you know, the old proverbial frozen market where sales are soft. You see an uptick here in new listings, only 100 homes. So it's nothing uh, trend worthy. And we're seeing that as typical um, that active listings are starting their decline now as we get to the holidays. So you can see that it's done it here. And here and here we are now. So the closer we get to Christmas, the lower that number will be. We're still hang we're still hanging in the twenty thousand range. But I wanted to talk about the Fed a little bit. And as he came out yesterday, and Pat and I were just talking before we got online here, saying that you know he said he he's not sure how high they need to go or how long this journey will take, but he is now convinced that they're going to have to come in harder than they thought, and it will cause a recession. So um, they made that very clear that they're just going to keep marching upwards. And so I wanted to kind of give a perspective on, on what's going on out there versus monetary policy. And then Pat's got a great analysis from Barry Habib we want to share. And this chart here is M2 money supply. And you can see the Shaded areas right there are when they had to, in, they injected all this money because we were told to stay home for a couple of weeks and they put all this money in the system. And you can see this is money that's in checking accounts and uh, savings accounts. And there's a lot of money out there, considerably higher than what you saw back here prior to uh, the stay at home. Now, what happens is when this money gets injected in the system, equities are the first things to shoot up. So stocks and housing benefit from all this new, newly printed money in the system right away. But then there's a lag period for when inflation starts showing up. As you can see here, this is when the money first got injected. So inflation went down and then it went way down. Inflation didn't start showing its ugly head until here. And it took a year for inflation just to get to its baseline of where it was. So the money goes out there. We end up with lower cost of goods. Then there's too much money circulating and inflation is off the charts up here. So when is that, when is that going to get down here to their target range again is what he doesn't know. And now if you look at the Dow Jones Industrial, and I'm, I know I'm getting a little wonky here, but um, the money 
came in right here. Look at the stock market. Came up immediately. Now they're pulling back. Look at the stock market. It went down. It started to come up. It's going down. So it's having an immediate effect. But we're not seeing any improvement in the inflation rate. And that's going to take some time. So, Pat, you've got um, what the heck is going on out there? We didn't have a reaction yesterday, uh, but we're seeing it again today, just like when they raised it in September, right? Yeah, pretty much. We're having kind of the same same effect. It's not as pronounced as it was uh, in September, but uh, you know, we had a rally. These are bond prices, you know, but we had a rally last week. Obviously, short term, we saw the short term rally. But we were starting to see this um, inflection point that yeah, it had a kind of a crazy day yesterday with uh, it opened up positively and then it, it turned negative pretty quick after he started talking, um, you know, his comments. And basically, uh, do you want me to go into Barry Habib now or do you? Yeah, let's take a look at that because I, I, mean, I think uh, um, I think people are going to find that interesting because we talk about him a lot. And what's yeah. his what's his take on this uh, is a, What's going on? Now I'm going to have to turn your mic off when he's going here. Um, okay. We'll see if we can get the audio to come through when you play that. Started things off pretty good, but then Jay Powell went rogue, showing just how out of touch he is, and he is running out of time. The Fed still has a ways, but then he went on to say it is way too premature to be thinking about pausing and that the Fed still has a ways to go. And he said he would rather overdo it than underdo it and said that the Fed could always cut rate hikes or, or could always cut rates in the future. So sure. after those comments, the market's really sold off sharp. Well, I think the two, the two, you know, ones, the, the daggers from him were the premature to be thinking about pausing, but the big, big, big one is would rather overdo it. You know, I mean, completely contrary to um, what was being said with regards to, okay, we understand that there's a cube, we understand that there's a lag. All the things we've been telling you, right? Remember, we've said to you when the Fed, hikes rates, nothing really happens the day the Fed hikes rates from a consumer's point of view. 30 days later, their statement on a variable type loan, like a, you know, like a credit card or something like that, that then we, they see the change. 60 days later, they write the check and feel the change. But if you're in the middle of a transaction, you probably kind of go through with it. It's after like two, three, four months that it has that impact. So while the statement acknowledged it, Dan, the Jerome Powell just comple completely threw that in the trash. He went off the rails just when we thought he was getting it. And now the market's clearly reacting to that and showing just like the Fed said, how little they know about inflation. Yeah, Jerome Powell admitted how little he knows. And now what has happened is this market has lost confidence in this Fed's ability to navigate this. They are, well, at least Jerome Powell, showing that he is driving full speed ahead pedal to the metal on hikes, but focused only in the rear view mirror and not worried about the dangers that lie ahead, whatever the consequences may be. And I think, Dan, that this is just, you know, it's, it's a terrible, terrible ego that this man has because he knows it is mostly his responsibility. Clearly the government has, has a great degree of responsibility as well for pouring stimulus on top of an inflationary environment not the smartest thing to do, but he was asleep at the wheel, Jerome Powell. And he told us all it was transitory. So he knows that he's about to go down as the worst Fed chair in history, maybe, maybe second to Arthur Burns, maybe even worse than Arthur Burns, but his reputation is soiled, tarnished. No one has confidence in his ability. And now this man, at all costs, whatever he does to the economy, however, he's going to battle inflation, whatever the body count is, and it is, it is absolutely disappointing how this man has completely gone rogue and is not listening to anyone out there who has any sort of common sense to guide him in the right direction. So, you know, there'll be people who disagree with that and we kind of have to digest that a little bit. Um, but that's just one guy's, um, you know, view of what, of how they're trying to handle this. But the bottom line, agree or disagree, um, they said, They'd rather overshoot and pull back than uh, pull back too soon. So we're going to be in this uh, for a while, don't you think? Oh yeah, I mean, um, and I, I'll tell you what—I'll give very, uh, you know, 
kudos because back when feds were talking about transitory, these guys that you we just listened to, Barry and his son, they follow it. They're all over saying this is not transitory. There, he was one of the first ones. You know, we were watching him, and I totally agree with him. That's what back March last year that we're like, you know, this is this is not right. And he's been calling. He calls a Fed out, and he's not he's not afraid to call him out. And obviously, he said they're focused in the rearview mirror, and the fact that you know the Fed is just out of touch. And you know, and I think the biggest thing the market's showing is that you know they don't have any confidence in what he's doing, and that he knows what he's doing. So. You know, you had yelling him saying, oh, you know, everybody's political as far as talking about how it's transitory and that even Biden said it's just going to be temporary. Um, you know, it's here. And it's well, there was there was a much different tone yesterday, though, wasn't there? I mean, from the September meeting that he had. Did you notice that at all, Jackie? Did you watch it? Yeah, I did. And he, he's he, mad. He, he, he was just shaking his head. And going, uh, the numbers are worse than we anticipated. But we well, feel that just goes to show you that they don't know what they're doing. You know, yeah. they're they're you know they they haven't known what they've been doing. They've been looking in a rearview mirror. So, you know, when they, you know, it's almost like they're kind of giving a signal when they when they start cranking up. That's probably the time when the market. You know, they've been behind. They've been behind the eight ball for for a long time. So that's why he he he's kicking himself is what he's doing. Well, I'm not seeing. And Jackie, unless you are, but I'm looking at the numbers and I'm not seeing list prices come down. Are you? I mean, no, this, you no. know, this is and, this is what I'm seeing is we're just we're stuck. Right. And I, I think and, I think uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think everybody's just well. Let's see what's going on next year. In other words, I'm I've got my house listed. It's going to ride it out. It doesn't sell. It doesn't sell. <laughs> and maybe things will improve in January as far as more buyers coming to the table. Are you hearing that? I, I am some, but I'm, there's also a lot of people we're dealing with that they have a necessity of selling. And so their attitudes are a little bit different. I think because I'm talking to a lot of agents out there and I think the reason we're not seeing the price adjustments so much is for a couple different reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons is that people are trying to get creative offer uh, buy downs uh, seller concessions, they're, they're, and even the new agents that I'm talking to right now, I've got, um, two transactions that are seller financing, um, which I'll talk about more in a second that we just pulled that together. We had no activity whatsoever on it, but it, a lot of agents are starting to have conversations that versus the list price coming down, they're trying to give incentives to the buyers because bringing the list price down 50,000 isn't going to do much as far as a payment versus trying to do something like I, you know, the one patent I have going right now, we did a two, one buy down um, on a VA loan and his payments are phenomenal for the first two years. And, and he was a necessity buyer. He's military. He's moving here, needed a home. Um, you know, we had that conversation. He might be upside down a little bit for the beginning of it. He understands that actually, believe it or not, and I'm not seeing this very often. I haven't seen it in months. His appraisal came in 10,000 high. Well, yeah, and, and kudos uh, to you. I, I already you, went from, you went from application to clear to close in eight days on yep. a VA loan. Yeah. That's, that's wicked fast. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say he was with a different company when he first came to me. Um, and they did not have the ability to do the two, one buy down and, I brought up the conversation and at first he was a little bit resistant to it. And I said, you just have the conversation with Pat. Let's talk about it. Um, he was actually afraid we weren't going to get, it was 12,000 something to get to buy it down for the two, one buy down. He was actually a little, my chair is going down as I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> so, so I have to, in a second, my head's going to be down here. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> The shrinking Did lady. Did you notice I was shrinking? I'll have to no. play it back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was like, I can't tolerate this anymore. I keep getting lower and lower. <laughs> Anyways, the, um, you know, we were, it was a VA loan. We were asking for the seller to pay all the closing costs. And I think he was actually in a little disbelief. We also got the 12,000. There's that sound again, that, uh, 
$12,000 and something as far as the buy down too. So it was phenomenal. And then our moral listing, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to rattle a second. Our moral listing, it was just sitting on the market. It's priced at 433. It's in that, that spot where everything's kind of just frozen. Um, we started at 485. So we've dropped tremendously and we've tried to stay ahead of the market as far as um, our competitive listings, not looking at sold comps, only looking at what's under contract pending and active. And we were still getting nothing. So I kind of pushed the envelope a little bit because, you know, we're not supposed to put any financing information in the private, in the public remarks. My yeah. first line says, <laughs> so seller willing to do fine, uh, seller financing, call list agent now. And my phone blew up and I've got three contracts in hand. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. hey, we haven't been seeing that. So uh, that's cool. Pat, looks like, you're, are you going to, is there a chart there you're looking at? You want me to share? I'm just going to go back to our, uh, this, I'm going to start looking, I'm going to start keeping an eye on this chart right here. <laughs> the, uh, where are we at right now then you think? We went through euphoria, unease, denial, pessimism. We're in pessimism. Pessimism. We're in, pes we're in I think we're pessimism right now. I mean, do we get the yeah. panic and capitulation, despair? I, I mean, I don't know if it's going to get that bad, but we might get in a little, little panicky. You know, I mean, I think the biggest I think thing there's a that little we, out there already. Huh? I think there's a little panic out there already. I mean, we've yeah. seen it in the eye buyers and the builders. Yeah, so I think well, I'm going to keep watching that, that chart. The Case-Shiller <laughs> index, the blue line here is their forecast. So this is for the rest of you. This is an index, so percentage of growth or whatever. Um, so they're, you know, they're forecasting, obviously, down, 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 but still growing or 3 to 4% uh, by the end of next year. Now, having laid that out there, they're notorious for being wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think everybody but, is, you know, so yeah, I haven't run into anybody that's, that's really been right. Um, so except, I think, except it, us. It, yeah, no, I've been, I, okay. Here's where I was wrong. And I, 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 uh, I actually got a video. Oh, I was wrong. Remember what I said about expired listings that it would spike to over 1000. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't, it, it went what up to 789. That's still so, high. Yeah, that's still high. Uh, so my, and I didn't have any empirical data that I was looking at that were, I just picked that number out of a hat because you weren't I'm looking really wrong, at, Rick. at, you know, people just don't want to have their homes listed around the holidays. And then on top of that, the house is sitting there. So as the listing gets up to its expiration date of October 31st, they're just going to let that, let that fly. So what that means, there probably weren't that many listings that went on you know, 90 days ago, you know, most contracts or listing agreements are at a minimum 90 days. So they mm -hmm. probably didn't have that many are, signed. And so there weren't as many to expire as I, as I thought, but, uh, uh, so are that, that's cancellations. Go cancellations up. haven't uh, spiked up yet either. Um, okay. they, as I look at the, the numbers there, I think, uh, um, back on market still staying around 700 cancels are staying between seven and and uh, 800. So they aren't spiking up either. I think the people that are listing right now are, are just, um, they're just going to hang in there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they got to sell, but they're not budging on their price. They are increasing the amount of seller contributions, but they're sitting on their hands. Now we wait now till the mid December meeting, and there's going to be more speculation, Pat, I think about this one than there is on any of the others because you know i mean everybody just knew this was going to be 0. 0.75 yeah um, pretty much yeah December, I mean, nobody knows but they you know he just kind of came out and said um we're gonna keep doing this till we uh till our goals are met and how did he say and and meet we will in other words you know don't there were people talking about whether or not he was going to pivot man he made it clear yesterday don't don't bring the pivot word up in front of me Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, well, that's I think thing. a lot. I think a lot of people just thought, as far as him pivoting, not actually reducing rates, just slowing down. And obviously, that he's got no intentions on that. I mean, yeah, so it's going to be a we'll it's going to be a rough going to be a rough road for the year. I think. I think he pretty yeah. much carved that in stone, unless we have some unforeseen. I mean, the Bank of England raised their rates yesterday, um, so I don't know. I just I, just thought about this. I think. Um, 
you know, they're so fixated on the job, uh, on the job market. Um, and I'm just kind of talking, throwing this out for conversation, but if you stop and think about it, this job market has been so, um, um, dilute or what's the word I'm looking for. The, uh, the job market has been so out of whack with COVID, you know, you've got, they said they got 10 and a half million dollars, you know, 10 and a half million job openings. People aren't going back to work. So, I mean, you know, is really, you know, this, I mean, this sounds, I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there, but is the job market really the number one thing that they should be looking at on how you raise rates or lower rates? Because I think it's so out of whack with COVID mm -hmm. um, that I don't think that's a good indicator. I think you have to look at, you know, the prices they're, they're not, my big thing is to go back to oil and gas. If we get a change here uh, next couple months, you know, where you get regulations loosening up on oil and gas, I think that'll help. I think the regulations will help if we get something, a change there. Well, his core time. inflation data that he looks at doesn't include um, food or fuel, which is interesting, um, but that's that's what he, he looks more at manufacturing along that line. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I wanted to share with you guys another statistic too. You know how I track the seven day moving average? Mm -hmm. And so I say, this is how many new listings came on. Here's how many went under contract. Right now, um, the ones coming under contract are about 67% of the new listings that are coming on. Okay. Interesting. Compare that to last year. Guess where we were? 106%. In other words, last year, this week, we had 3,928 wow. new listings come on board. 4,155 contracts 106 percent compare that now keep in mind 4100 contracts right so today we're only at 2200 contracts so we had 3493 new listings come on 2282 go under contract but that's still a percentage of 65 percent so that's not a that's a fairly respectable number that's not a fall off the cliff number no so that something will really have to change there for prices to really start flying down and it'll start showing up in uh, the number of homes that are actually going under contract as a percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it, I don't see how we're going to get slower than this floor that we've hit of 2,200 contracts. It just seems to be stuck there. So we'll continue to track that every, I look at it every day. We'll look at it on this show once a week. I want to remind everybody if you haven't registered yet for our meet and greet, it's going to be November 15th in Chandler from five to seven. And uh, I'm going to have a link down below where you can click and register. We still have some spots left. And uh, I do have the, um, uh, the injunction against uh, Pat for bringing his leisure suit and karaoke machine. So that's all in place. So I want to, you know, calm any fears out there that, that that's going to happen, but we would love to see it. And what's fun is I'm going through the, number of the names and stuff than emails of people that have registered. And I recognize the majority of them from being uh, regular viewers on the, on the channel. So that's kind of fun. So. <laughs> Full beans. Looking right. forward to seeing you guys there. It's going to be, let's see the 15th that's uh, coming up. So yep. going to be Come a fun up. time. So take on the day. Have a great week, everybody. Take care, everybody. Bye.